So, Tommy, what I'd like to do is I'd like to start. I think you'll remember this. A little bit of history here, right? A little bit of history. Yeah. it with three. Gonzaga has time to do something. Sox for the win. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. What are you thinking in those moments? Holy shit. <laughs> I, 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 the great story, I was with him last night. I was in Orlando recruiting, and they played their last home game last night, and I went with him, and he's just a... Uh, a great kid, and uh, you know, it was, it was just a pleasure to be with him, and it was really fun. As he was telling me how much he loves all his coaches, you know, and his new coaches, and uh, and as you know, you, you know, Brett, Brett worked really close with the Gonzaga program, and still does, and and so he got really close to Jalen, and uh, it was special to see him have that moment. Well, it's, it was a transformative experience for him, so that obviously was etched in college basketball history. And right before, I asked him the night before on Zoom. Uh, what do you want to accomplish tomorrow? And he said, I want to make my seven-year-old self proud. Special. Okay? So he hits that shot. Where is he from? Minnesota. Minnesota. Right? Yeah. So they tweeted this out. How cool is that? Yeah. Serendipitous. Pretty so that's cool. his little self to the yeah, left. That's him. Look at that smile. <laughs> Isn't that amazing? And so what yeah. we wanted to do is he went, he would always find himself in the floor and talk to himself before the game. Mm -hmm. And at the beginning of the year, it was go kill. Yeah, yeah, yeah. At the end, it was have fun. And it was because of that little boy, and we gave him this for draft night to represent the Gonzaga experience, to stay yeah. connected to the innocence. What makes it hard for freshmen to do that? Um, you know, just I think they, they, they try to move too fast these days, and, and they don't enjoy the process. And, you know, it really it moves me because, you know, I coach because of the struggle. I love helping people through the struggle, and, 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 and coaching's a messy business, you know, and, and behind the scenes, and, you know, and, and I had a friend tell me once, you know, a good coaching friend, basically, if, if you don't like solving problems, don't get into coaching, and it's all about solving problems and, and watching them go through that, and as you know, I mean, I think all of us coaches could write a book, you know, that would be a great book for you guys to read of, of the struggles and the problems our good players had to get where they, they ended up going and, um, and, and to watch him grow the way he did and, uh, and, and to use the word fun because I, I have a little deal I do, you know, for myself, a little exercise every once in a while. Just it's don't forget dot, dot, dot. When you're sitting on a plane, you know, all these things, you know, we have in your mind, but sometimes you can't forget. And the number one thing I wrote for this season is don't forget you coach better and your players play better when they have fun. And, you know, don't, don't start taking this stuff too serious. And, uh, you know, you're, you're speaking of all your little phases there, and I know you're really good at that stuff, and you sell books, but, uh, and that stuff, but, uh, but, 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 but I was having a conversation with one of my coaching mentors, you know, is, you know, and I got a few of them, you know, I got obviously Mark Few, uh, Steve Kerr's become one now that I'm in the Arizona family, uh, David Blatt is a good one, a good friend of mine from Europe, and, uh, and, and Steve told me literally what you said about stage one, he's like, enjoy this moment you're in. Because you haven't been institutionalized yet. <laughs> yeah. He said, you're going to get institutionalized Amen. and you're going to start hating coaching and hating this and hating that. But that first year is something special. So I'm going to try to bottle that and hopefully I can recreate it next year. You've gone through year one. What is something that you're more convicted than ever on? And what is something you've changed your mind on? Um, the conviction deal is just, uh, is, is, you know, I'm not going to use that word, I mean, to use the word again, but do what you're convicted about. You know what I mean? For me, I mean, that was, uh, you know, I mean, it, it's a crazy story. I mean, you know, uh, you know, people probably don't know this, but like, you know, I followed Sean Miller, who did a really good job at Arizona, and some things happened, and next thing I know, I'm the head coach, and, and Sean and I live uh, literally across the golf course from each other. We see each other's <laughs> houses. That's a true story. And so I went and met with him about a month on the job, because I was like, you know, hey, this guy's a hell of a coach, and he and I were coaching friends. And, um, you know, I, I didn't want our first interaction with our families met at the steakhouse and there was an awkward standoff, you know, and I was like, so, so I went and met with him and he gave me some great advice that I really, he said, you know what, your first year, you're the only one that, needs to, that knows what needs to be done here. Follow your gut, do everything you want to do, don't listen to anybody else. And I'm like, but the message was, do what you're convicted about. Mm -hmm. Do what you believe in. And so I, I followed that all year. I, I really did. And, uh, and it really helped me, you know, I, I think get plays off, the place off to a good start because, you know, as a, as a new head coach, you can question yourself, you know. And, and it, it's, 
you know, I, I didn't take a small job. I took a monster, you know, and, uh, and that fan base, they, they were patient till we won three games and they were wondering if we're going to the final four, you know, and I'm like, oh my God. So, so you're sitting there and, uh, and so everything you do, you have to be convicted about. And so I, I just said, you know, what? the only things I'm going to do this year are things I know. Mm-hmm. Every out of bounds play is going to be a play I know. I ain't, I'm, I'm not reinventing the wheel. Every, you know, defensive coverage, something I know. And, uh, and that's what I did. And, uh, and, and I thought it was great advice just Stay convicted and do what you know best. And what'd you change your mind on? Change my mind on is like, man, when do I get a day off? <laughs> uh, as an assistant coach, you have all these built-in days off, you know. Especially for Mark. And, and, oh, well, no, but hey, you know, and Mark is a great head coach and, you know, Coach Cowell's in the room and all these guys are, but as an assistant coach, you know, sometimes you get a little sick of your head coach. And so, hey, coach, I'm going to go out recruiting. You know, you, you go take two days on the road, a little personal vacation. You go down to L.A., you watch one game, you come back and say, hey, yeah, I think he's pretty good. We should offer him, you know. And then, <laughs> you know, or, or, it's, or it's your scout. And you, you know, you're all into your scout. Hey, it's what we got to do to beat him. And you're in that. Then, then you win. And then, well, you know what? The next day you come into practice, it's not your scout. You know, you're like, well, you guys figure this out. You know, I'm, I'm good today. So uh, just, just the amount of energy it took to, to be on every day. And, you know, and, and you're involved in every scout, every decision. And, um, and, and just for me, I mean, I have a, I have, listen, I, I love coaches. And I, I think I always knew I was going to coach, but I have a newfound respect for, for these guys. And so for me, it's crazy humbling to sit here. You know, a year later, I mean, you know, from that picture right there to think that I'm sitting here in one year, it's like, come on now, you know. So, um, so, I'm, so I'm crazy humbled and, and even have more respect for these guys that do it. And not, not that I didn't respect before, but even more now. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm hopefully I can keep building on my career and I can pass it on to the next generation. We, I want to return to what Steve said to you. And, you know, if you were going to look at this head coach's face right here, how would you describe this picture? I had that look a lot this year. <laughs> you don't know how many times I, I thought, should I call a timeout? <laughs> I, I, I don't really have any good ideas. <laughs> hey, well, I want to show you something. So this is the look he has right here, all right? And first year head coach, infancy stage, just like you. This is what happened seconds before. They're playing the Chiefs. The week before, the Chiefs went down in overtime and ran at one. This same situation, take a look. Second and 10. <laughs> Got it. So look at the reaction. Accepted. Eli Apple jumped the route. Oh, Robinson doesn't, won the game. Get, Robinson doesn't get his head around. It's a slant. Mahomes throws it. But this ball is to be over. It should be over. Apple sends the Bengals to the Super Bowl. You should have just said right here. It, no one touched it. You'll never have an easier walk-off touchdown. I showed this to a coach, and he said he hasn't been tainted by the profession yet. Yeah. yeah. What does that mean? Um, you know, I mean, that, that's, that's an interesting question. I think the institutionalized things are really interesting. Like, you know, the, the pain of those losses are real. You know, I mean, that's the one thing about coaching, which is so great about coaching. It's an all-consuming job. And the highs are high and the lows are low. And, um, and, and, and it's really cool to be in a profession like that where, where it means so much, it impacts so many people. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I don't know. I mean, Look I, at this. Okay, so we go there. Yeah, yeah. yeah I'm happy. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So how do you maintain that? What I want to do is I want to show you something. So when anytime, like this was uh, at the banquet for Coach K. Mm -hmm. He's won five national championships. Take a look at this. So they're yelling, we want six. Okay, yeah. How do you process that? It's a lot. I mean, just uh, it's so hard to win in that tournament. I don't think people have any idea, you know, and, it, and, and it's what makes it a great spectacle is how hard it is actually to compete in it. And, um, and you know, us going this first year, I mean, for, for example, we came out of nowhere. I mean, we weren't ranked or nothing like that. And, you know, we were a bunch of misfits and all these international guys. And the next thing you know, we started playing and we're playing pretty good. And the next thing I know, we won the Pac-12, we won the tournament, we're a one seed. 
And then you know what? It was about, are they going to get to the Final Four and win the whole thing? And I'm like, I mean, come on, people. Like, you know, like, but it just moves so fast. And, 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 uh, and, it, and, it, and the, the narratives that get created are great. It's great for, you know, the, the public. But, it, but it's hard on the players and it's hard on the coaches. And, uh, you know, I, hey, I'm grateful to be in that position. And uh, the We Want Six deal, I, um, you know, uh, I mean, I saw Coach K the day before that game. And... He was exhausted, you know. I mean, he he had been through the ringer, and uh, it was amazing. He got his team there, and um, and and you know, and then just to not get it done, I doesn't. I don't think it makes light of what he's accomplished, you know. I mean, to, I mean, I don't know how many Final Fours they've been to. A lot. Yeah, I mean, I've been to two, and it's been incredibly hard. <laughs> but that's something I really want to talk about because it's for an athlete when they hear we want six, we want six. Mm-hmm. If they don't do it, it's very easy to see how their self worth could be attached to their performance. We don't get it done. I've disappointed all these different people, right? And we know this, that when we say yes to something, we also say no to something, right? Mm-hmm. So when Coach K says yes to a farewell tour, right, yeah. who are they going to now make it about every place he goes? Himself, right? Mm-hmm. And you say everything moves so fast. And so when you think about these things, and again, this is brought to him, who's it about? When you think about Krzyzewskiville and the students, that's the system right there. Yeah. They build you into these mythical figures so recruits want to play for you. So how do you, in the infancy stage, because you know that they're going to start promoting all this stuff that you've done to try and build some momentum, mm-hmm. how do you not lose yourself to that? I mean, I, I think you just got to be honest with yourself and, and be who you are every day and, uh, and understand, like, listen, I'm a, I'm a small-town kid. I'm from you know, the foot of Mount St. Helens, you know, if you guys know where that is. I mean, my dad's a carpenter, you know, and, uh, and still 70 some and pounding nails and wearing a tool belt to this day. And, uh, and, and, and I think you just, you honor that, you know, and at the end of the day, I, I, I want to honor our players and I want everything to be about our players. I've had a good life and, and hopefully I'll continue to do that, but I'd rather have them get the, the shine and all the honors. Let's give it up for Tommy.